I feel that in my work, particularly with TV's meteorite men, I've had the opportunity to be an entertainer and a science communicator. And that's that's something most people don't have the, the chance, the opportunity to explore. I spent a lot of my life as a rock and roller, as a professional musician in rock and roll bands, and I love public speaking. And I am also passionate about science, so I tried to wrap all of that together and I feel that my background as a rock and roller really helped me convey my love of science and education to a television audience. I had a, a love of science from earliest childhood. My father was an amateur astronomer and my mother believed in field trips to museums. So I was exposed to meteorites at a very early age and I was really enthralled by them. Of, of all the things in the museum, minerals, gems, stones, dinosaurs, it was, it was the meteorites that, that enthralled me the most. So I don't think that I picked meteorites. I'm pretty sure that they picked me. It was a love at first sight encounter. My whole life I've loved science fiction, astronomy, the night sky, geology. I spent uh, much of my childhood in the quarries in southern England looking for rocks and fossils instead of in the classroom where I, where I probably should have been. And for me, all of those things are wrapped up in meteorites. So meteorites are astronomy made manifest on Earth. They're the geology of other worlds. Only a few humans have been to the moon and we haven't been to any of the other planets, moons or asteroids yet. So in a sense, we can only speculate about the makeup of those bodies except when we study meteorites. When, when we see, recover, examine, study, learn from meteorites, we're really seeing the, the cosmos, the, the universe outside our own little world brought here to our planet where we can learn from them. I'm a field guy and I love travel. And while I enjoy being in the lab, the thing I enjoy the most is being in the wild places looking for meteorites. So I've visited over 60 countries. I've been to six of Earth's seven continents and some really astounding places. The Australian outback, the Atacama Desert in Chile. I've crossed the Arctic Circle three times. One of the stories that, that really sticks with me is, is being in Siberia, in Northern Siberia, in Russia, en route to the Tamir Peninsula, where I was among the first group of non-Russians ever to visit this gigantic meteorite crater, 35 million year old meteorite crater, Popigai in Northern Siberia. And we had to leapfrog with many different planes to get there. And the planes got smaller and more rickety as time went on. And one of the last legs, we were sitting on on the runway in this little airport for a long time. We're the only plane there. It was a propeller, four engine propeller plane. And I kept looking out the window. Why aren't we going? Why aren't we going? And after a long time, I saw two guys wheel this kind of cart looking thing out. I was looking through the porthole. What are they doing? What are they doing? And they put cables onto the engine and they jump started the plane to get us to the crater. So uh, if you ever have any sort of fear of flying, I don't recommend the short hop domestic flights in Northern Siberia, it's a bit dodgy. I feel very fortunate to have had a, a thrilling and adventurous life with a lot of travel and written numerous books, hosted a hit television show. And I've always been a collector. My whole life's been about collecting things. And I feel that I have benefited greatly and immensely enjoyed this collection. And at this point in my life, I want to live a simpler life myself. I want to try and stop collecting things, but I also want this collection to go out in the world and be enjoyed by other people. I have hundreds of beautiful meteorites that I've either found or acquired through trades and acquisitions with friends and colleagues. And I feel like they've brought me so much joy and wonder in my life. I would like other people to experience them, but also reflecting back on my adventures. I hate to resort to cliche, but I always thought it was about finding the thing. The, the adventure, the expedition was about finding the rock. And when I look back, I realized that the, the richest part of it was the experience itself and the memories of, of the adventures. 
I've had so much joy and fascination through collecting these meteorites that now I want other people to feel the same sense of wonder that I have when I held them and contemplated the amazing journeys that they've had to get here to planet Earth. I've spent hundreds of hours preparing for this auction. I went through my entire collection, I catalogued them, I, I paired them up with relevant papers or documents that maybe help tell their history. And there have been a few times when I've, I've looked at something and I've thought, ah, oh, it's going to be really difficult to part with. And I would say at the top of that list would be the Sokotalin iron meteorites from Russia. As an artist and someone who loves visual and aesthetically beautiful things, I'm captivated by the, by the shapes of these iron meteorites. And these are sculptures that have not been made by a person. They're, they're cosmic sculptures. They've, they've been formed during the meteorite's fiery journey through Earth. And I, I find that combination of elements, the, the nickel and iron from the asteroid being melted in the air of Earth and then falling to the ground and being recovered to be an astounding story. So I've looked at a few of these pieces and thought, oh no, what's my life gonna be without that? But I, I'm reasonably confident that other collectors and enthusiasts will, will get the same level of joy out of these as I have. There are a number of different factors that make particular meteorites extra appealing to me. Always there's a story. If, if a meteorite has a, a fascinating story like, oh, it was discovered 70 years ago, but then resurfaced because of my TV show, Meteorite Men. I love, I love that kind of thing. That's, that shows how people actually learn and, and benefit from an educational program. But it, it really comes it comes down to the to the shape to the physical beauty for me the most the the specimens that have acquired a fantastical shape especially the irons i i just find amazing they're they're artworks they're unique natural cosmic artworks i've been thinking to myself what does my collection mean what does my meteorite collection mean and it means everything to me it's it's my life's work it's over a million miles of travel on six continents. It's unspeakable adventures in some times very dangerous and very wonderful places. I've met amazing people. I've used great technology, metal detectors, helicopters, drones, amphibious vehicle. And I want that, I want that sense of wonder of the cosmos to be shared by other people. Meteorites have been very good to me. The collection's been very good to me. I'm, I've arrived at a place in my life where I want these meteorites that have been the source of such joy and amazement to me to go out and start a new journey into the world. And I hope they mean as much to their new owners as they have to me.